So we're going to be parting out nine copies of set 76202. It's the stupid Wolverine mech. I always get these at walmart.com when I'm trying to get to the minimum purchase amount for free shipping. Uh, it has a decent part out. It's about three to four times uh, the, the price that Walmart was selling. And the key to a good part out is uh, to be actually watching Law and Order or while you're parting them out. Actually, I always we're always watching TV <laughs> while parting out. Uh, so the first thing you do is, or I do, is to separate by bags. And this set does not have number bags, so that generally means that all the pieces in a bag will only be in that bag, but in this set there's one piece that's in two different bags. Uh, and I sometimes I'll start with a bigger bag, but in this case I started with the smaller bag because the smallest pieces are, to me, the most annoying uh, to separate. I use these little tr little cup-like containers. These were like food storage containers I got at Bargain Hunt when they were super cheap. I got about 200 of these. Uh, it's great for parting out uh, most sets. Some sets have more than 200 lots, so I have to use other other things. But the great thing is you set you sort it by the piece type, that way you're only really touching the piece once, and once you put it in the cup, uh, when you're putting these away, all you got to do is dump it out. If you're sorting into trays, which I also do uh, sometimes, uh, then you got to actually pick the pieces up out of the tray, which is an extra step. But I like doing it this way, where I'm just putting them in the cup, and then I'm done with it until we're putting them away in the drawers, and then I'm just dumping them out. So once you get done with the bag, you go to the next bag. Uh, sometimes I'll take the first bag and just see what parts are in there so I'll know how many cups I need, and then I just dump all the rest of the bags. Uh, if you're doing more than five to ten sets, you might have to not do all the bags at once because it can get overwhelming when you get, if you're get you trying to do like 20 bags <laughs> at once. Uh, but how, whatever you're comfortable with. So, uh, my daughter, when she was helping me, sometimes she would just do one bag at a time. I don't want to do that, uh, especially something that is as simple to part out as this. Now, I'll probably do another video uh, of a more complicated part out, something that's got a lot of different lots and has numbered bags. Uh, again, the sets that don't have numbered bags are always, to me, easier than sets with numbered bags because generally all the parts are of one particular type will be in only one bag in that set. So if you look closely, another thing I'm doing is I, I am arranging these uh, by color. So I'll have like all the bright orange together, all the dark blue together, all the black together. And that's because when I go to put these away, I will want to have uh, them arranged by color because it's easier uh, to just go through the list uh, from starting black, usually the first color for some reason. <laughs> all the way down to white or whatever comes after that. Another thing to keep in mind, it's usually easier to start with the bigger pieces in a bag. So if I start with the biggest pieces, they're usually the easiest to grab. And then I also go for pieces that kind of stand out. So they're either a different color than a lot of the rest. And I just work my way down to, usually you're down to like the smallest pieces in the last slot, you can just kind of scoop up uh, when, you're, when you're done picking all the other pieces out. Now, another thing to keep in mind is a reason you don't want to mix bags, like if, if I was doing like all the bags of a set, you don't want to mix them. Well, you can if you choose to, uh, but the reason I don't is because there are similar parts, parts that look the same. Maybe they're parts that have a left version and a right version, or parts that are, just have a, a minor difference like the one by one bricks that have a stud on the side or something uh, it can be more more time consuming to try to separate those out and usually lego does a good job of putting those types of parts in different bags so, so that when you're building uh, you don't mix the part up and parting out if you're just dumping everything together you might end up having a wrong part mixed with something else and we ha even trying to take the precautions I do, we still get the occasional part that gets mixed in, sometimes with a part that doesn't even look like it. It just somehow got swept up in, in the frenzy going into one of the, the containers. But, but generally, you want to think of things that might cause a mistake when you're sorting and try to prevent that here so that you don't have a missing part later when you go to pick it in your store. And 
the big bag it was the easiest by far to part out and we are done so i'm arranging them by color and we're ready to go put them away in the store brick store uh, to upload these parts uh, to my inventory on bricklink and uh, the first thing is to open a new file and then select the, the set number that you're going to part out and i already had it in here because i was about to do it and i said oh wait a minute i need to record myself doing this and then i'm going to change the quantity to nine and then i'm going to part out the item which is the set and i'm going to part out the minifigures too uh, you can choose to sell the whole minifigures normally i do that but in this case for this demonstration i'm parting out the minifigure and then i arrange them select all set to price guide it's generally better to set to last six months sales average in this case i'm setting it to current inventory so the prices will be higher less likely to sell um, and then i'm going to export and always choose the sec second option there and then I'm, when i get to this page i want to, to be the new price i paste it in there i choose stockroom b because that's where i want the parts that don't have a remark to go i do a whole nother video explaining why, why I do it this way. It's just my personal preference. You don't have to do this. Most of these are already in my store because I've parted out so many of these. In fact, I think the only thing that's not in here are the minifigure parts. Maybe one other piece. And then I just upload it. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't put them physically in my store. Oh no. What am I going to do? I need to go add them to the store. <laughs> so, um, so what I'll do is I'll go here, this part of BrickLink, and see what parts from that set, including the minifigure parts, are in my inventory. And these are going to arrange them. Uh, I can arrange them by remarks if I want to, or by color. And so here is everything that is already in my store, whether or not it has a remark. And this is how I can go and put them away. Now, I could do it the step before as I'm uploading it, and I do that a lot. This, I, since I knew all the parts were already in my store and I knew it wasn't going to take me a long time to put them away, I just chose to just go ahead and put them up and then go see where they are and put them in my store like that. Now, some people might choose to close their store while they're doing this so that they don't take that chance that somebody actually places an order while you're putting stuff away. I've never really had a problem with it, so I don't worry about it so much. So now I've got the computer over on my little cart, and I've put this in a place in the store where I'm hopefully going to walk as little as possible, although I don't mind getting my steps. I do try to get 10,000 steps a day. Uh, so I'm doing the same things that I just showed you. I'm going to look up the part or the, the set number for those parts that are in my store, and then I've got them separated by color, so I take off I'm starting with black, because again, black alph alphabetically is always one of the first colors. And so I just separate them out on, on my table, and then I start at the top and just work my way down. So i got to find the drawer. And this is harder while filming. I, I, I should have wore the GoPro <laughs> while I'm doing this so that when I'm putting them away. But I, doing this with a camera in one hand <laughs> and putting them away with one hand shows that it actually isn't that, that hard. Or that... Well, except when i got to do the trays. The trays are... They're a little bit more cumbersome to have. That's why I like the drawers over the trays. I mean, the drawers are just super simple. I can do them one-handed. Just open the drawer and then dump the parts into that drawer. Uh, it's easier with two hands. <laughs> so when I pick an order, we just pretty much go in the order of the, the numbers of the drawers. So you're, you're going up. So there's a little bit of an order. When I'm putting them away, I don't worry about putting them in the order that they would appear, like doing drawer one, then drawer two, then working their way up, you know, however they are. Now, these are all over the place in the store. They could be in any drawer. They could be in a container. They could be in the trays. I'm not worried about that because I, it, it would take me longer to sort these, say, take them, sort them in the order that they go, and then put them away. It's like in the time that it took me to sort them, I could have already put them away. <laughs> So, I don't, I have never, in the almost 20 years I've been selling on BrickLink, I've never sorted them, like, in the order that they're going to go in the drawers before I put them in the drawers. I just go and put them in there. It's, my store is small enough. Now, if you had a bigger store, it might make more sense to arrange them uh, before you put them in there. But again, that's more time. So, you're sorting. So, to me, it's less time sorting 
and just take that time and put them away. Now you want to have a system that's efficient. So I am kind of sorting in that I've arranged them by color, but it, it's really, it doesn't take that long to separate <laughs> your containers uh, by the color, especially if while you're sorting, you're arranging them that way. So that's what I've done. So it, it just, it's, just takes a few seconds really to put away each cup in the drawer. And again, I'm not having to walk very far to do it. If you had a really large store, yeah, it, it would start that, this time would start uh -oh. to add up and then it would make more sense. I really hate these that are on the floor. Oh, I got to uh, work on numbering uh, the lips of these drawers where I can see them from standing up so I don't have to get down on the floor uh, to look at the numbers. I've just been so busy doing other things, I haven't got around to doing it. Now, one thing, when I get drawers like this that are going to be overflowing, I take them out, I set them on the table with the cup, and then I just wait till I get everything else put away. So all these that I've been setting on the table with the cup, that uh, they've outgrown the drawer. I'll look for other drawers. Sometimes you can just see them, with, especially with these clear drawers. I, I see one, oh, this one, I can take it out because that's this big drawer doesn't have as many pieces in it anymore. And what I'm going to do is after I get done putting everything away, I'm going to move the inventory from the drawer that outgrew itself and just swap the inventory with another drawer that it's, it, it's shrunk. Its inventory is shrunk. And that doesn't really take that long. I'll do that at the end uh, after I'm done putting everything away and usually I do run into that especially when I part out a, a large quantity uh, of a set uh, they just get into bigger and bigger drawers and sometimes they move into the shoebox containers uh, depending on what I'm parting out but for most most of the time it's not so maybe I don't know just a handful of drawers will outgrow if you're doing a, a, a rather large part out uh, sometimes uh, I run into um, times that I need to uh, add more drawers, but in this case, we only we're only going to have the four parts for the minifigure. I think were the things that didn't have a drawer. I also add those later. Sometimes I have to wait for a drawer to uh -oh. empty. I did have some empty drawers at, when I was filming this, and I could have gone ahead and added those remarks before I did the upload. But I decide I always wait till after. I like to put everything away and then whatever's left that doesn't have a drawer if i have those available drawers i'll add them then you know if you're watching this long i feel like as i talk about this i i sound like maybe i'm making this more complicated or sounds like it's more complicated than it really is it's not complicated at all and this is so much more efficient than what i was doing and i want to thank bricks on the dollar who is the one that uh from watching his videos that got me to go into the one light one drawer thing again this is not for everybody because you may not have the space to uh, do one light one drawer and in some cases here in my own inventory i have things that are in more than one like these these um bead drawers it takes a little bit longer to pick but i'm generally dealing with smaller quantities in those although the more i i do this the more it seems like i add more parts to these bead drawers uh, so, and they, they've worked uh, all right now i wouldn't want to have my entire store be the bead drawers or the poppy max containers or these trays that i've been showing you as we've been going through this video uh, the drawers are by far uh, the easiest and all those seconds over time they really do add up and again, if I just had my choice, everything would be in drawers. <laughs> if they made giant drawers the size of shoebox containers, that wait, they actually do the sterilite containers. Probably they probably got some that are smaller that I could use. But uh, again, the space starts to become an issue. So how are we doing? We're getting. We're, are we getting close to wrapping this thing up? How many more do I got? So I'm going to speed this up as we finish up here. So. I don't think I mentioned it before, but the part out while we were watching Law and Order on this nine set part out. Again, this was only a hundred and fifty one piece um, set with fifty two lots. It was fifty six or fifty five lots with the minifigure being parted out. So all of that parting out the hundred and forty plus pieces times nine it was over a thousand. Uh, 1300 I forget how many it was pieces it took 37 minutes 
Uh, I actually got the raw footage. I could prove it to you, uh, but you'll hear Law and Order and us talking <laughs> in the background uh, with that. And then putting away, uh, I don't know what the actual time was. This would have, again, this would have been a lot quicker uh, if I just put the GoPro on my head and kept both my hands free. So it did slow me down a lot. Uh, probably doubled my time in putting it away. But it still wasn't terribly long to put it away. Uh, so dark blue, what I'm working on now, that's, there are a lot of dark blue. Oh, that means I still got a long way to, to go if I'm only in the D's as I'm going through this. You know, I spent all the time filming all this. I'm going to put it in the video. <laughs> I thought about just like really super hyper lapsing it, you know, going like 10 times the speed or whatever. <laughs> and I probably should. It's probably going to make this totally unwatchable. If you're watching this long, let me tell in the comments. <laughs> but I wanted to show you the whole thing. And again, I, I, ideally I would have like, wanted to talk while I was putting it away but I feel like I'm more likely to make a mistake doing that even just holding the camera which is my phone in one hand and putting away with the other hand yeah it was it, yeah it did greatly slow me down oh, I hate it when I get to these drawers or it doesn't fit so all these ones that yeah don't fit I'm definitely going to be putting these in bigger drawers here I am looking for a drawer Again, oh look, oh, there's one. It, when you, you're putting stuff away all the time and you're picking orders all the time, you kind of get to know when a drawer is getting close to the end and you say, okay, I need to remember that drawer later. Sometimes I'll notice that and go ahead and take the drawer out while I'm picking an order. When my wife's picking an order, she doesn't have to worry about any of those things. She just picks it. If the drawer is empty, we got a box, she throws the empty drawer in. I know Mardi Gras man, what he'll do, is especially since he will have more than one lot in a drawer, he'll put a sticky note. Like if he's got a divider in the drawer, if only one of the side of the drawer is empty, he puts that sticky note so he knows that drawer has an empty slot. Now, I do have a few drawers that have empty slots. There's not a lot of them. Or not, I shouldn't say empty slots. They have two <laughs> uh, portions of the drawer. Uh, I haven't come up with that system yet. I probably should. Uh, because when that space is available, if I don't keep the drawer out, I won't know it. So sometimes what I'll do is uh, each day I'll look through all the orders that we had and see what drawers or containers that aren't as easily recognizable um, that are empty or got emptied in a particular order. And then I'll just go look at those. So if my wife picks the order, I don't know it. I go look at the, the recent orders and see which uh, drawers became available or trays became available or Poppy Max containers became available and I can fill them up that way. Because one thing you don't want to have, you don't want to have lost pieces and you don't want to have empty space that you're not using because you don't know it's available. Now, I think I do pretty good at, at finding the empty drawers or the empty slots on the trays or the empty Poppy Max containers or the empty bead drawers. Uh, but again, I don't have a lot of them, so it's, it's like I can do a quick check if I need to. Like if I forgot to fill a, a spot, I can just do a, a quick check for everything. And Oh, there's an empty spot, and I can fill it. But if, if your store is growing or you're using bead drawers a lot, you definitely got to have a system for knowing when that space is available so that you don't waste that opportunity. Now, the bead drawers are great for space. I mean, you have small lots, but uh, they, it does take longer to put things away and to pick them. So I've I set up two windows where I can change the uh, location as I move items that are going to a bigger drawer and the items that are going back into a smaller drawer. I just swap the numbers. You want to make sure that this gets saved. If you make this change and you do not save it, or something crashes, or you make a typo. This is how parts get lost in your inventory. So you always want to make sure um, that any change you make, and it's dangerous to have two windows open if that same item appears in the search that you're doing. And I know in this case it did not. So I'm changing the drawer to the new location of the part that's going in the small drawer, and then you, you can put them away then. I usually wait to put them away after I'm sure that the information has been saved. Now, in the past, I have lost pieces this way. Now, this may seem like it's extra work, 
but it really doesn't take that long to do this at the end. And it's just something as you grow a particular part that's more in your store or a part starts to dwindle out. It's just it's something that I think has to be done. I mean, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Is that what you do? Do you move things around? Am I the only one that does this? <laughs> I, th I feel like it's necessary, though. I mean, when it, it outgrows the door, I mean, you just can't just have it overflowing. You got to put it somewhere. So I just put it in a bigger drawer. There's all. What is it in Jaws? They said you're going to need a bigger boat. And sometimes you need a bigger drawer. Now, sometimes I will put all these in the drawers before I go physically put the drawers back in their spot. I'll just have them set out on the table or on the cart. Uh, but again, that's a personal choice that you can make to do it then or later. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends. Sometimes I don't want the clutter. Sometimes I, I feel like I'm going to make a mistake and move apart a second time. <laughs> and so it, it, just whatever works for you in this. And then always just making sure that information is saved because you don't want to put something away and then you don't know where it is later. And I do have a system for finding missing parts although there is a part that showed in my inventory uh, that i cannot find and i don't have an empty drawer or a drawer or a, a, a something missing remarks i can't i've i've been through it so i don't know i think it might have got mixed in with a part that is similar it's the only thing i can think and i haven't even found that one yet so again this is an opportunity for mistakes to be made so always be careful when you're doing things like this when you're changing the location of a part just make sure you're putting it with the right part and that you're saving the location uh, i think i've said that enough through this video <laughs> but yeah you don't want to lose parts when you're putting them away so now that we're done I'm done with the part out. I can go see what my inventory is in my store. Oh, actually, I'm going to notify people of the parts that were, were added, which were a few. And then I can see what I got in my store. And this is not my all-time high, but I'm trying to get to 600000 